Yes, we have made it into double digits. This is the non-qualified evangelist number 10. Now, in episode 9, we see that Isaac does a great number of things that his dad Abraham did before him, including naming the well, establishing a peace treaty with Abimelech, going through the sister routine, and all things God's got his back. This guy becomes very, very wealthy. He recognizes Hashem, invokes his name, builds an altar. He has these two beautiful babies, okay? Now, here's the deal. One is kind of cunning. The other one, maybe not so much. The parents divide and conquer. Mom's got Jacob. Dad's got Esau. Jacob has a little cunning to him. And he's, in he he's one heck of a cook. He sells some very expensive soup, though. This is how he gets the birthright. This episode, we're covering Genesis chapter 27 and 28. So you know the routine. Let's slow down and rest, relax. Let's see if we can't tune our minds to understand this word. God, we are going to need your help to do that. Please help us with understanding what it is that we are listening to. Amen. Genesis chapter 27. And it came to pass, when Isaac had become old and his eyes dimmed from seeing, that he summoned Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son. And he said to him, Here I am. And he said, See, now I have aged. I know not the day of my death. Now sharpen, if you please, your gear, your sword and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me. Then make me delicacies, such as I love, and bring it to me and I will eat so that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to Esau, his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt game to bring. But Rebekah had said to Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard your father speaking to your brother Esau, saying, Bring me some game and make me delicacies to eat, and I will bless you in the presence of Hashem before my death. So now, my son, heed my voice to that which I command you. Go now to the flock and fetch me from there two choice young kids of the goats. And I will make them delicacies for your father, as he loves. Then bring it to your father and he shall eat, so that he may bless you before his death. Jacob replied to Rebekah, his mother, But my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I will be as a mocker in his eyes. I will thus bring upon myself a curse rather than a blessing." But his mother said to him, Your curse be on me, my son. Only heed my voice and go fetch them for me. So he went, fetched, and brought to his mother. And his mother made delicacies as his father loved. Rebekah then took her older son Esau's clean garments, which were with her in the house, and clothed Jacob, her young son. With the skins of the goat kids, she covered his arms and his smooth-skinned neck. She placed the delicacies and the bread which she had made into the hand of her son, Jacob. And he came to his father and said, Father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, It is I, Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Rise up, please sit and eat of my game that your soul may bless me. Isaac said to his son, How is it that you were so quick to find, my son? And he said, because Hashem, your God, arranged it for me. And Isaac said to Jacob, Come close, if you please, so I can feel you, my son. Are you indeed my son Esau or not? So Jacob drew close to Isaac, his father, who felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are Esau's hands. But he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy, like the hands of Esau, his brother. So he blessed him. He said, You are indeed my son Esau. And he said, I am. He said, Serve me, and let me eat of my son's game, that my soul may bless you. So he served him, and he ate. And he brought him wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come close, if you please, and kiss me, my son. So he drew close and kissed him. He smelled the fragrance of his garments and blessed him. He said, See, the fragrance of my son is like the fragrance of a field which Hashem had blessed. And may God give you of the dew of the heavens and of the fatness of the earth and abundant grain and wine. Peoples will serve you and regimes will prostrate themselves to you. Be a lord to your kinsmen and your mother's sons will prostrate themselves to you. Cursed be they who curse you and blessed be they who bless you. And it was when Isaac had finished blessing Jacob and Jacob had scarcely left from the presence of Isaac his father that Esau, his brother, came back from his hunt. He too made delicacies and brought them to his father. He said to his father, 
Let my father rise and eat of his son's game, so that your soul will bless me. Isaac, his father, said to him, Who are you? And he said, I am your firstborn son, Esau. Then Isaac trembled in a very great perplexity and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game, brought it to me, and I partook of all when you had not yet come, and I blessed him? Indeed, he shall remain blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he cried out an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me too, father. But he said, Your brother came with cleverness and took your blessing. He said, Is it because his name was called Jacob that he outwitted me these two times? He took away my birthright, and see now, he took away my blessing. Then he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, a lord have I made him over you, and all his kin have I given him as servants. With grain and wine have I supported him. And for you, where? What can I do, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, father? Bless me too, father. And Esau raised his voice and wept. So Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, of the fatness of the earth shall be your dwelling, and of the dew of the heavens from above. By your sword shall you live, but your brother you shall serve. Yet it shall be that when you are grieved, you may cast off his yoke from upon your neck. Now Esau harbored hatred toward Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau thought, May the days of mourning for my father draw near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah was told of the words of her older son Esau, she sent and summoned Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau is consoling himself regarding you to kill you. So now, my son, heed my voice and arise. Flee to my brother Laban to Haran. And remain with him a short while until your brother's wrath subsides. Until your brother's anger against you subsides and he forgets what you have done to him, then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved of both of you on the same day? Rebekah said to Isaac, I am disgusted with my life on account of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth like these, of the daughters of the land, what is life to me? Genesis chapter 28. So Isaac summoned Jacob and blessed him. He instructed him and said to him, Do not take a wife from the Canaanite women. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take a wife from there, from the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. And may El Shaddai bless you, make you fruitful and make you numerous, and may you be a congregation of peoples. May he grant you the blessing of Abraham, to you and to your offspring with you, that you may possess the land of your sojourns, which God gave to Abraham. So Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went toward Padan Aram, to Laban the son of Bethuel the Aramean, brother of Rebekah, mother of Jacob and Esau. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him off to Padan Aram to take himself a wife from there, as he blessed him, he commanded him, saying, You shall not take a wife from among the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and mother and went to Padan Aram. Then Esau perceived that the daughters of Canaan were evil in the eyes of Isaac, his father. So Esau went to Ishmael and took Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, son of Abraham, sister of Nebaioth, in addition to his wives, as a wife for himself. Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran, He encountered the place and spent the night there because the sun had set. He took from the stones of the place which he arranged around his head and laid down in that place. And he dreamt, and behold, a ladder was set earthward, and its top reached heavenward. And behold, angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, Hashem was standing over him. And he said, I am Hashem, God of Abraham your father, And God of Isaac, the ground upon which you are lying, to you will I give it and to your descendants. Your offspring shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread out powerfully westward, eastward, northward, and southward. And all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you and by your offspring. Behold, I am with you. I will guard you wherever you go. 
and I will return you to this soil. For I will not forsake you until I have done what I have spoken about you. Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely Hashem is present in this place, and I did not know. And he became frightened and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the abode of God, and this is the gate of the heavens. Jacob arose early in the morning and took the stone that he placed around his head and set it up as a pillar. He poured oil on its top, and he named that place Bethel. However, Luz was the city's name originally. Then Jacob took a vow, saying, If God will be with me, will guard me on this way that I am going, will give me bread to eat and clothes to wear, and I return in peace to my father's house, and Hashem will be a God to me, then this stone which I have set up as a pillar shall become a house of God, and whatever you will give me, I shall repeatedly tithe it to you. Yes, that was Genesis chapter 27 and 28. And clearly, Jacob, he was just tasting the theft. He understands what a birthright means. He understands what a blessing is, or at least his mom does. And he's listening to his mom. He literally says to his good old dad, because Hashem, your God, arranged it for you. This, along with putting on the dead skin of this animal and his brother's clothes, it was let's just call it extensive. The dad, he has no idea. He's blind. He hugs him. He's like, yeah, you smell, you feel, but your voice is Jacob's. But no, 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 we're good to go. The blessing is yours. And he blesses him. He says, everything's yours. So Esau understands he just lost out on a fortune. Esau goes to his dad. He says, hold up. Oh, are you telling me that you don't have a blessing for me? <laughs> Isaac says to his son, yeah, no, no, uh, no blessing. Esau goes bananas. This guy, he's uh, angry. What? But bless me too, father. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, then you are going to be blessed, the fatness of the land. But he says, listen, you're going to live by the sword, man. That is what this thing is. And you're going to serve your brother. But beautifully, he gives him like a little concession. He says, wait, if by chance Jacob turns out to be a tyrant dirtbag, then you can throw away this thing I'm telling you about serving your brother. No hard feelings. Would you like, is that good? Do you like that? So Esau leaves. He says, no, dad, I don't like that. <laughs> Out of earshot, of course, he decides I'm going to kill my brother. Sick and tired of this mess. Enough is enough. I'm killing him. The mom hears and says, oh, no. Brings the son in and says, son, Jacob, my darling, listen, you got to get out of here. I'm sending you to Laban until everything settles down. She goes to her husband, Isaac, and says, if this boy takes one of these Canaanite women, ah. Uh, what is my life? Oh, and she triggered, done. Yes, my darling, I can handle this. Don't worry about it. Son, come here. I have this idea. <laughs> he says, go to Laban. This is what's going to happen. He gives him this monster of a blessing. He says, here's the, here's the blessing of Abraham. Good things and beautiful things and go. Hearing that these Canaanite women are a trigger to his mother, Rebecca. This man Esau, he plays a cold game. He rings up his uncle Ishmael, says, hey, Ishmael, you got a little, you got somebody for me to marry? Ishmael says, absolutely, I've got a beautiful daughter. What do you think about that? He says, I think, I think good things about that. Send her down. Just a, just a little bit of a stick. So you can see, okay, Jacob's going this way. Esau's going that way. Jacob stops at Mount Moriah. Now listen, Mount Moriah, we know from the Abraham Isaac era, that's where Isaac was put on the altar and offered to God. In fact, this mountain, Abraham says, this mountain is where God will be seen. Jacob leaves and stops at this place, Mount Moriah. He sets up like, like a stones around his head, like some sort of a thing. And he sees God. There's a vision. He sees God. He sees a, a ladder of angels coming up and down. Hashem says, listen, let me tell you something. I want to bless you. This is what this blessing is going to be. It's going to be like Abraham's blessing. He wakes up. He's like, oh my God, this place is, it just blows his mind. This changes everything for him, man. He brings these stones together. He piles them up into a pillar. He pours oil on top of it. What is the oil? What is the pillar? Why not an altar? Before he had built an altar, he invoked the name of Hashem. But here he sees God. He builds a pillar, pours the oil on top. He says, this is the house of God. Okay, that's it for the Non-Qualified Evangelist episode 10. Stick with us. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoy. I love you very much. We'll see you in a day or three days or a month. Bye.